after that long break, I am about to do my review on Genesis chapters 1 to 50. I hope you have been reading your Bible every day. I just have not been posting. But I am continuing to post. It's called resilience. Yes, it's called resilience. So I am going over the review from Genesis chapter 1 to 50, what we went over as I was doing my Bible reading post, because I'm about to enter into the book of Exodus. And yes, I am reading the King James Version. <laughs> but my review is just one snippet from each chapter. We have had so much food that we fed on, and I'm sure that we have gotten fat spiritually from feasting on the book of Genesis. So as we move on to Exodus, we will continue to feed on the word of God and grow in our spirits so that God can be glorified. And we will continue to live in obedience to his word and be found in his righteousness. Genesis chapter 1. God had created the heavens, the earth, and everything within it. From the speck of dust to the unseen wind and all that lives and moves, including time, the day, night, and the seasons. He made man in his very own image and give him rule over the earth, not the sky, but the earth. Genesis chapter 2. And again, it's just one little snippet. I'm popping out from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. God formed the man and placed him in the garden, told him to eat of everything within except from the tree that was in the middle of the garden. That was the tree of good and evil. Then God brought the animals that he had created to Adam, and Adam named each and every one of them. He had that knowledge already within him from God, because God had breathed his breath into him. Adam was very much alone. So God made one woman from one of Adam's very own rib and presented to him as his life partner. Genesis chapter 3. Eve, which was the name that Adam gave the woman, began listening to the serpent. She got hooked into his deception and lies. She and Adam ate from the tree, which was in total disobedience to the Lord. Just by them listening to the serpent was the act of yielding their authority to a falling being and placing them in a cursed position. God cursed the ground. He cursed the serpent. He cursed the woman and pronounced judgment on the man. And in haste, God clothed Adam and Eve and put them out of the garden. They went east. The direction east has great significance in the future. As we read on in the Bible, we will find that out. Genesis chapter 4, Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel made in-kind offerings unto the Lord. The Lord did not accept Cain's offering, who Cain was the older brother. He only accepted Abel's offering. So Cain got envious and jealous of his younger brother Abel. And Cain 
killed Abel. Abel's blood cried out unto the Lord from the ground. And God heard it, and he punished Cain and sent Cain away. Cain went east, the same direction has great significance. <laughs> As we read on in the Bible, we will find that out. Genesis chapter five, Adam's family line continued on with Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahaliel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. Noah's sons were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. We must note though that Enoch walked with God and he didn't die for God took him. Genesis chapter 6, wickedness in the earth spread like wildfire as men began to multiply. And so humans corrupted the earth with so much evil that God repented and that he made man and decided to destroy them. But Noah hmm, found grace with God and he told Noah to build an ark so that he could save himself and his family. He also told Noah that he was gonna bring a flood on the earth. Genesis chapter 7, Noah and his family went into the ark with two of every kind of animals and living creatures. Then the streams and rivers were opened up and it rained for, from heaven for 40 days and 40 nights. And the entire earth was covered, even to the highest mountain, with water. Nothing survived. Only those who were found in the ark. Genesis chapter 8, the flood abated and Noah sent out a raven and two doves. When the earth was dry, God called them all out of the ark. Then Noah built an altar of worship unto God. <laughs> Genesis chapter 9, God gave Noah and his sons instructions to live now in the new earth. God blessed Noah and his sons and made a note to remind him not to flood the entire earth again at one time. So he set the rainbow in the sky as a reminder for himself whenever it rains. Noah eventually began planting and Noah drank of the wine made from his garden and he got drunk. Ham, his second son, laughed at him and he cursed Ham's generation starting with his son Canaan but he blessed his other two sons that covered him Shem and Japheth Genesis chapter 10 Japheth's family line lived in the coastlands and Ham's family line included Nimrod and the Canaanites Shem's family line lived in the east and there were, these were now the initial forming of the different nations. Genesis chapter 11. They began building a great tower to climb up higher. Which actions displease the Lord? So the Lord came down and he confused their language. So they could not understood each other and had to quit. It must be noted that Abraham was from Shem's family line. Abraham married Sarai. Genesis 12, God appeared to Abraham and told him to get up from the country where he was and go. I will make you a great nation, he said, and you will be a blessing. So Abraham took his nephew Lot and sojourned to Egypt. Once in Egypt, Abraham lied about Sarai and said she was his sister because he was afraid that he would have lost her because she was beautiful. 
Pharaoh took her. And Pharaoh and the whole country was cursed <laughs> because of Sarai. Pharaoh deported them out of Egypt. <laughs> Genesis chapter 13. Abraham journeyed with his nephew Lot and his wife Sarai. But they had so much wealth, the land could not hold them together. Their servants argued over land for their cattle to graze. So they decided to separate. Lot went to Sodom by his choice because it looks greener on that side. And Abraham went to Canaan. The Lord promised Abraham that same land of Canaan. Genesis chapter 14. The kings in the surrounding countries went to war and took Lot captive. Abraham, when he heard, went out and rescued Lot. Later on in the chapter, we find that Melchizedek blessed Abraham, and Abraham gave him a tenth of everything he had. Genesis, Genesis chapter 15, the Lord promised Abraham an heir, many descendants. Abraham believed. The Lord also told him that they would be enslaved, but would then return again to the land that he promised him. Genesis chapter 16. Sarai, hearing this, knew how old she was. So she gave Abraham consent to have children with her maid, Hagar. <laughs> he did. And Hagar conceived and bare a son and then ran away because Sarah's, of Sarah's harsh treatment. But an angel sent her right back. <laughs> Hagar's son was named Ishmael. Genesis chapter 17. God made another covenant with Abraham and renamed him and Sarai. He called them Abraham and Sarah and promised them a son. Abraham then circumcised all the men. Genesis chapter 18. Three visitors stopped by to see Abraham and said that Sarah would have a son by this time next year. But they were on a serious mission. Sodom was very evil and the stench of sin reached up to the heavens. So when Abraham was told by the Lord that he was about to destroy the cities, he pleaded with the Lord for the city because his nephew was there. Genesis chapter 19, the angels took Lot, his wife and his daughters out of Sodom forcibly by their hands and told them to escape and do not look back. The city was then destroyed by fire raining from heaven. A nosy Lot's wife looked back to get a glimpse of what was happening. And she immediately turned into a pillar of salt. Later on in the chapter, Lot's daughters tricked him into bed and had children for him. Genesis chapter 20. Abraham traveled to Gerar and lied about Sarah, Sarah his wife again. He said, she is my sister. Hmm. King Abimelech took her, but God warned him in a dream. Not to touch her. He restored Sarah to Abraham and also gave them gifts. Genesis chapter 21. As promised, Sarah had a son and his name was Isaac. Then she had Hagar, her maid, and her son, Ishmael, sent away. But God preserved them. In this chapter, Abraham also made a treaty with Abimelech. Genesis chapter 22, God told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. In obedience, Abraham took his son Isaac to the place of sacrifice and an angel stopped him from killing his son. The Lord then provided a ram instead and blessed Abraham for his willingness and act of obedience. Hmm. Genesis chapter 23, Sarah died in Kiriath Arba. Abraham asked the Hittites for a burial site. 
to bury her. He bought a cave from Ephron in the plains of Mamre and buried Sarah there. Genesis chapter 24. Abraham's servants went to Nahor to find a wife for his son Isaac. He prayed on his way for God's favor. Then he met the beautiful Rebecca by the well. Then he worshipped God. Rebecca eventually went back with him and married Isaac. Genesis chapter 25. Abraham died and was buried with Sarah. Isaac and Rebekah had twins. Esau and Jacob were their names. Esau was the rough and hairy son who loved the outdoors, and Jacob loved Esau. Uh, um, Isaac, sorry, loved Esau, but Jacob was the smooth son, and he stayed around the house, and Rebekah loved Jacob. Esau sold his birthright to Jacob for a meal. Genesis chapter 26. In Gerar, Isaac lied about Rebecca. Again, he grew so rich that Abimelech sent him away. He dug wells and at Beersheba the Lord blessed him. Jacob saw Esau, sold Esau again. This is Genesis chapter 26. I made two, two sets of notes on this. Food for his birthright as the firstborn. Genesis chapter 27 of Rebecca, Laban's sister, Isaac's wife, used Jacob to trick Isaac into giving Jacob his blessing. Esau vowed revenge on Jacob, his younger brother. So Rebekah told Jacob to go to her brother Laban. When Esau saw that the Hittite women that he had married pleased not his father nor his mother, and they told Jacob not to marry any of the Hittite girls around here, <laughs> Esau tried to please them by taking one of the daughters of his father's brother Ishmael and marry her. But nothing more was said about that. Genesis chapter 28. After Rebekah pleaded with Isaac, Isaac sent Jacob to marry one of the Laban's daughter. On the way to his uncle Laban, Jacob fell asleep on a rock and dreamt of a ladder reaching to heaven with angels coming down and going up on it. And the Lord blessed him. Genesis chapter 29. Jacob fell in love with Rachel, Laban's daughter. Laban made him work seven years to marry Rachel, but Laban tricked him on his wedding night <clears throat> and gave him his older cock-eyed daughter, Leah, instead and made him work seven more years for the beautiful Rachel. God made Rachel barren. But Leah had many sons for Jacob. <laughs> Genesis chapter 30. Rachel's maid had sons for Jacob. Then when Leah saw that she also saw that, she also gave Jacob her maids to have children with him. <laughs> then Leah had more sons and one daughter, Dina, for Jacob. Finally, Rachel got pregnant and bore Jacob a son. Jacob cut a payment deal with Laban for flocks for his wages. He messed with the cattle and the flocks and eventually owned almost all of the cattle that were born after the deal. He became wealthy even more than his uncle Laban. In Genesis chapter 31, the Lord told Jacob to return home. After convincing his two wives, Jacob and them left in secret. <laughs> Rachel stole her father's Laban's idol. Laban went after Jacob and caught up with him. They quarreled over the situations and eventually made a peaceful treaty, never finding his idol. Because Rachel was sitting on them, Laban left. And Jacob continued on his journey to go and see his father. Genesis chapter 32. 
Jacob heard that Esau was coming to meet him, and he was afraid and prayed to God. He then sent gifts before him to appease Esau. That night, he wrestled with a man who maimed him at daybreak, and he blessed and renamed him Israel. So his new name is Israel. Genesis chapter 33. Esau and his men arrived. Jacob bowed down in fear, but Esau, he embraced him and greeted him instead. They separated again and Jacob settled near the city Shechem, named like the king's son, and built there an altar of worship unto the Lord. Genesis chapter 34, Shechem, the, son, the king's son, raped Dina, Jacob's daughter, and asked Jacob to marry her. But Jacob's sons told him that in order for him to get her, he must circumcise all the men in his country first. And when they did, and all the men were very sore, Jacob's older sons, Simeon and Levi, killed all of them and took all the goods and the women and children in the city because of what they had done to their sister, Dina. They were tricked. Genesis chapter 35. Jacob went to Bethel and God renamed him Israel. They journeyed on and Rachel died right after childbirth. Having Israel's twelfth son, Jacob named him Benjamin. Then Israel died, and Esau and Jacob, his sons, buried him in Hebron at Mamre, the burial place where Abraham and Sarah was buried. Genesis chapter 36. Esau's sons were Eliphaz, Ruel, Jeosh, Jalam and Korah. Esau and his family moved away to Seir, and they became the Edomites. Genesis chapter 37. Joseph was Israel's favorite son. Joseph often told on his older brothers and also had dreams, and his brothers were jealous of him. So when Israel sent Joseph to check on them one day, they took that opportunity and sold him to the sojourners. He was brought to Egypt and sold in a slave trade. And he was bought by Potiphar in Egypt. Genesis chapter 38. God killed Israel's grandsons, Judah's sons, Ur and Onan, because of their wickedness, leaving Tamar, a widow, Judah sent her away and promised her his other son when the boy grew up. But he reneged on that deal. And she put on a veil, covered her face, and tricked Judah himself into sleeping with her. She had twins for him, her father-in-law. Genesis chapter 39. Potiphar put Joseph in charge of his house, except his wife. His wife now tried every day to seduce the young man, Joseph. But Joseph feared God and refused to have a relationship with her. She then tried to force him and then lied about it when he got away. So Potiphar, her husband, believed her and put Joseph in prison. Genesis chapter 40. Pharaoh put his cupbearer and baker in prison. Joseph interpreted their dreams. The cupbearer, he was restored, but the baker was hanged. Genesis chapter 41. Pharaoh had a dream and no one could interpret it. its dreams. The cupbearer told him about Joseph. Pharaoh called for Joseph out of prison to interpret it. 
the dreams predicted a serious lengthy famine. So Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of all Egypt, moreover, to ensure there was provision during that period. Genesis chapter 42, Joseph's brothers went to Egypt to buy grain, but didn't recognize him. He kept Simeon in person and sent the rest to fetch Benjamin. Joseph gave them back their money by sneaking it into their sacks. Genesis chapter 43, when the grain ran out, Joseph's brothers were sent back by their father to Egypt, but they were not going to go back without Benjamin. So Israel, Jacob, known as Jacob, their father grievously sent him with them, but not before Judah promised to be responsible for his safe return. Once in Egypt, Joseph invited them to his house and gave them a big feast. Genesis chapter 44, Joseph hid his cup in Benjamin's sack, then sent a steward after his brothers when they left, and Judah offered himself as a slave instead of Benjamin, so Benjamin can return safely back to his father. Genesis chapter 45, Joseph finally detold his brothers whom he was. <laughs> they were afraid, but he told them, what they meant for evil, God turned it into good. His brothers joyfully went to tell their father and also bring him back to Egypt. Genesis chapter 46. So Israel set out with all his household, joyfully, just happy now. His Joseph is alive and God told him not to be afraid. So Israel and all his family came to Egypt and Joseph welcomed them. Genesis chapter 47, Pharaoh allowed Joseph's family to settle in the land of Goshen, as it was an abomination for the Egyptians to dwell with shepherds. Israel, known as Jacob, blessed Pharaoh. The famine was sore now and continued and Joseph made the Egyptians sold all they had, including their lands, to Pharaoh for food in order for them to survive. So Pharaoh became rich at the hand of jo Joseph. Genesis chapter 48, Israel, known as Jacob, he became ill, so Joseph took his sons to see him. Jacob blessed Joseph's sons as if they were his very own, putting Ephraim the younger ahead of Manasseh the older. Genesis chapter 49, Jacob, known as Israel, gathered his sons and blessed each of them. He made them promise him that they would bury him in Hebron with Abraham and Isaac in the cave in Canaan. And then Jacob died. Genesis chapter 50, Pharaoh allowed Joseph to go and bury Jacob. Upon their return to Egypt, Joseph told his brothers that he would not hurt them because they were still afraid that now their father isn't around. Joseph would have taken revenge on them, but he said he would not hurt them because he was sent there first to preserve their families. He then took good care of them and their families. But before Joseph died, he told the families that God would lead his people back to the land that he promised them. Thus ends the recap and review of the book of Genesis from chapters 1 to chapters 50. I hope you have been studying and getting a lot of food. These, this is just a little snippet as to go over some of the things that we covered in each chapter. So thank you for reading this chapter and going through it with me. I hope you have grown a little bit spiritually as you meditate personally and let the Holy Spirit minister to you personally as he did to me personally. 
and that you have grown some more spiritually in the Lord. So join me. I am headed to the book of Exodus, and yes, I am reading the King James Version because it is the Holy Word of God. Thank you for joining with me. I love you all. God bless you.